Wise Wild Women, and I'm your host, Janet Care Lesson, with Teresa Jeanette Thurman Morris. And uh, today we have a special guest, Jeanette Lucas, and we're going to be talking about her psychic detection skills. And she has uh, been working with police and other people, miss, finding missing persons, both deceased and alive. And she's been print, featured in print and broadcast media for her various work on homicide cold cases. Anyway, she's going to tell us all about herself. This is part two. We did part one last week, so we highly recommend that you go back and listen to part one. And because uh, we just ran out of time last time, and we were having such a great time. So before I bring on Jeanette Lucas, I'm going to bring on Teresa J. Morris. And I think they've got the right number. Here it is. Let me click her on. Hey. Aloha, TJ. Hi. Aloha, Hawaii. Hi, Hawaii. Oh. This is this is Gulf Breeze. So uh, we're Gulf in the, the uh, Panhandle. Sounds... We're, yeah, we're in the Panhandle, and it's a little chilly here in Florida today, but just usually beautiful. It's a beautiful sunny day. So glad you could uh, contact me, and I'm looking forward to. Uh, Working with you today and in the future on all radio shows. This is uh, still 2020, right? <laughs> so we look forward to working together. Yeah, we, we're we got a couple more weeks of 2020, and then this might go down in history for most people as the worst year yet. But I'm sure people have other things happen that are hard. Uh, as uh-huh. for that knows, so she helps. Please turn that off. Leave your cell phones at the door. <laughs> okay. I like the ringtone, though. That's very good. Anyway, uh, TJ and is, um, she has Teresa J. Morris, or TJ Morris ET Radio, and I have Aquarian Radio. So we're going to be recording this and uploading it over to our two different platforms, and then it, it goes through to uh, Spreaker. We both have Spreakers, and then they're kind of like, um, funnels out to you know a couple dozen different oh what do you call these platforms like iHeart and all kinds of things and then eventually we put it both up on both of our YouTube channels so this is going to get wide distribution anything you want to say before I bring on Jeanette well, I'm looking DJ. forward to getting to know yes can you hear me yes we can can you hear me I'm looking yes. forward to knowing Jeanette and uh, working with her in the future. And hopefully 2021 will bring us all together. But uh, I'm I'm glad that we're having a Woman's Wednesday, Janet, and uh, I think it's a good idea. And uh, we have a lot in common, and uh, I'm looking forward to getting to know her a lot more. So uh, I'm just looking forward to hearing Jeanette's story and her future books. So thank you. Okay, well, I'm going to click on her mic and welcome her to the show. Aloha, Jeanette. It's good to have you back again. How are you today? Thank you. I'm great. And you you too? Yes. Both doing good? Pretty good, pretty good. Uh, it's still hot here, but I like it at night oh, gets nice. out where you can put a, a blanket on. I love it when it's... Uh, Blanket weather. I sleep better. I think because I'm from Pittsburgh. But where are you coming from, Jeanette? What part of the world are you located in? Well, right now I'm in Richmond, Virginia, and I'm moving back to the D.C. area. Um, but so I'm, I'm I'm definitely talking to you from Richmond, Virginia area. But it's cold. It's probably degrees outside. It's <clears throat> too cold. Uh, it, winter is upon us. Winter is upon us. Yes. Now, do you remember uh, well, what I'd like to do in the show today, and TJ and I talked about this briefly earlier, is uh, we'll, we'll have you finish up your story, and then we, we want to go and, like, ask each other questions and mix up our voices and get to know each other. So we're going to, you know, go back and forth. You can ask us questions. We can ask you questions. We can um, ask all, the whole, all three of us a question, certain question, you know, what do you think about and insert. So I'll... Uh, Let's start with, and TJ, you knew where we left off last week, right? Where, was, where did we leave off? Yeah. I, well, I was wanting her to, I was, we left off with her going to tell us about, she and I both had a, a dream or a premonition, or she worked more than I did on it, but she's worked on several cases. I was an investigator, but she 
I didn't do my psychic investigation like with uh, the way she does. So I want to get to know how she does work, but I had Casey's Anthony daughter Kaylee visit me in a dream. So let since J, uh, Janet and maybe a lot of other people don't know what I'm talking about. Let Janet tell yeah, her story. Yeah, who is Kaylee? Who is, uh, who is this about. person you're talking about? Who is this person you're talking about, and why would she visit you in a dream? Tell us her backstory. The this a dead person? Something that was. Teresa, do you want me to tell her? Yeah, please, Janet. Tell her because. Um, you you did a lot of work okay. on it, and I just had this little baby visit me in a dream and tell me where she was buried and showed me a vision out in uh, you know in the woods. So, uh, but you got to hear hear the story. It's, it's very long drawn out, and it made television. But she knows about right. it, and she has, she <laughs> Jan, Jeanette, you tell them the story, please. So yeah. all right. So, so what year was you? Oh gosh, I think it was '08. I think okay. I'm, don't don't quote me. All right. So, um, in about uh, April, May of uh, don't quote me the year, but at least a woman was partying. At the time she was partying, she left her little girl with her parents. Her little girl was probably two. Her name was Kaylee Anthony, and um, the girl that was partying was Casey Anthony. And that's where you get some confusion. So it's Kaylee and Casey. So Casey was the mom. And Casey was running all around. I mean, I, I understand the partying, but in Florida, they did have a lot of weird, dangerous drugs, highly addictive, and highly, um, I want to I say they caused tremendous confusion in your head. And so she got up. I don't think it was crack or anything. I think it was some other kind of drug. And she got in with some very suspicious characters. And, you know, every night was a party. And eventually one day she took her daughter out and partied. And supposedly she said somebody took her daughter. And she went into this long, drawn-out story about the daughter. And typically in a crime case, if the story keeps going and going and going and going, it's typically a very suspicious case. Normally, a case is cut and dry. My daughter was abducted. Uh, I suspect it was this guy, A, B, C, D, and you're done. But this woman kept saying it again and again. And so I think because of her um, drug addiction from pot to whatever else, um, she had a lot of confusion going on in her own head at the time. And so uh, she somehow rented a car uh, because I guess her car broke down. I'm not sure the whole story. And when she brought the rental car to a parent's house, her mother went out there to get to go see if her granddaughter was in the car, little Kaylee. And she opened the trunk of the car, and it smelled like a body. Um, and the only reason that she knew about bodies is the mother, the grandmother was a nurse, and she knew about decomp. And um, she asked her daughter about it, and her daughter said, no, Mom, that's the old pizza that's rotten in the back of the car. You can't fool a nurse. You just It's very typical to fool a nurse. So she called the police, and she told them, I'm looking for my daughter. She's missing my daughter. Um, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm missing my granddaughter, Kaylee, and my daughter, Casey, says she doesn't know where she is. She said the nanny took her. Um, so long, drawn-out story, um, the story just kept getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. You know, if you lie one time, you're going to lie another time. <clears throat> so eventually they, they tried to hunt down the nanny, her whatever. The nanny didn't have the little girl, and she called her Zanny the nanny. <clears throat> But I believe she was at a complex, uh, apartment complex, where Zanny the Nanny was living, and she heard the name Zanny, so she grabbed the name Zanny um, just to throw in the story to give it authenticity. And um, so the police couldn't find the woman, and they asked Casey, where do you work? And she goes, I work over here. And she, I guess she didn't believe the, the cops were going to follow her to work and double-check on where she worked. And um, she tried to show stability, but she didn't have stability. And she hadn't worked at the office that she took him to in, in like two years or two months or something like that. And I'm vague on the details because I've moved on from it. So uh -huh. in time, they kept interviewing the mom, meaning uh, Casey Anthony. And in time, um, a, uh, a lawyer got involved to represent her. And also a private investigator got involved to represent her to find her little girl. And I'm not quite sure what she said to the, the PI or to the 
lawyer, but she either told him the truth, which I doubt, or she just kept giving a story after a story after a story. Um, and the media took hold of it and ran with the story, and it went all around the world. Um, because here's this little two-year-old who was precious because her pictures got out, and everybody's like, where's the baby? Where's the baby? Where's the baby? Because a lot of times when it gets killed by a relative, you know, it, it, it's buried in the backyard. It's buried at grandma's house. It's mm-hmm. buried here. It's buried there. I mean, they, they tend to find them. They find the link that might be connected to the, the missing child. Well, they never found the missing child. So um, during the next month or so, I got a call from uh, a man out of um, Winchester area, Virginia, and he was going to my father to take lessons in, in dowsing, which I use dowsing for pinpointing missing people. And he said, I really want to, he, he went to my father, he goes, I really want to locate missing people. So I worked with him for a while, and he sent me in the mail um, flyers on his supposed nonprofit he was putting together. So I kept all those details. I kept all his notes because he said I made it up. Well, guess what? I have all that in my file folder. <laughs> And uh, because I'd already been through it before with where I had some very suspicious characters come forward and say things. And so he asked me to finally locate where missing Kaylee was. And I said, well, she's down the street from the house um, uh, at a house where it's abandoned, lots of grass and so forth. And everybody that talked to me kept saying that's not possible, not possible. So you do run into roadblocks. All right. And because you keep getting these roadblocks, the story just kept getting more and more media attention. And during the process, they, I guess someone or lots of psychics stepped up and volunteered to work on the case and try to pinpoint where the little missing girl was. Well, and at that time I had children of my own and I was very busy with all my work and being a mommy and taking care of my own life. And then they, they kept bugging me and bugging me. And I finally told them again, she's right down the street and so forth. So they didn't want to hear it. So I worked on other cases with this particular person, Luke, L-U-K-E, Phillips. And uh, oddly enough, in time, um, a telephone repairman was over where the body was and said he smelled a body. He told a cop in the month of August. Um, So we went from like May, June, I guess, to August. And they never followed up on what I said. And he kept saying, I smell a body, I smell a body. Well, it, it has a distinct odor. And so the the cop, he told that there might be a body there. The police officer never followed up. So that went by the wayside. And then in time, because it was such a national case, I mean, when I say national case, I really feel bad for the family because I would bet there was at least 100, maybe 200 people in front of their house, supposedly, um, chanting, bugging them, harassing them. Uh, I mean, it, it was awful. I mean, it was really overboard. And, again, it was the, the real factor was all these people were upset about a little missing girl, and what's the answer? So, um, unfortunately, this happens frequently when people are not responsible. So, um, during the process, uh, I said to um, Luke Phillips, and I had met uh, uh, the PI, and his name was Dominic Casey, and um, I said, send me something from the little one um, that I can pinpoint more details on. So they sent me a teddy bear in the mail. And oddly enough, I start having dreams. But then Teresa tells me she started having dreams, which I wonder when those dreams started because I got the teddy bear. And the dreams started about a week or two after I got the teddy bear. And I really felt like little Kaylee was very intuitive. And, and I felt like she was deceased. And I felt like she had died from probably suffocation. Um, There was an, the mother was alluding that she drowned in the swimming pool. That's very possible because I I couldn't feel anything, which meant to me typically suffocation or something to that, something in that direction, which would be uh, swimming or either someone put a pillow over your head or either she was two and she, she had too many blankets around her. She suffocated. Um, So that's my take. Now, Teresa can add on to it. Um, a lot more occurred after I came into the storyline. Um, so, Teresa, what did you dream? You said you had little Kaylee came into your life um, in a dream, and Teresa told me that she had a relative 
by the name of Kaylee. So the link is there. And then on top of it, Teresa is pretty intuitive too. So go ahead, Teresa. What's your take on what you were picking up? Well, it had to be uh, I'm, the 2005. Uh, did, you, did you cite the? I can't hear you. I'm on computer. Can you hear me? I can say it again, Teresa. I can hear you. you broke up. Say it again. You broke up. Okay. Uh, my mother was alive, and that's uh, Janet. Um, I don't know if Janet was in my life. So this head mother came to uh, take care of me when I had my neck broke. So uh, 2004. Three and four, and then uh, I don't know when this happened. I would think between 2005 and seven. Uh, but Ka- uh, Janet, you can look it up, Casey Anthony case. But uh, okay, I haven't I'm seen it. Yeah, I've not. Uh, it's Casey Anthony or uh, yeah. I'll really look it up. Story. What uh, What's funny is this little girl somehow caught my eye with. Um, Jeanette. Now, to answer Jeanette's question, I, my mother had time to watch TV more so than I did, even though I was hurt and in pain. I, I don't know why I didn't do much TV. I don't remember doing much of anything. I guess when you're sick and broken, I broke my back and neck. So anyway, um, mother told me about this little girl because she had the same name as my granddaughter and was roughly the same age. I think within eight months, I have a a granddaughter named Kaylee, and uh, they were roughly the same age in Florida. And she said, isn't your granddaughter in Florida? I was like, yeah. And uh, I don't know why it was uh, came to me. I, 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 I would like to figure this out, but she came to me in a dream, and uh, I had told mom that, uh, mom, you know how you have, you know, psychic dreams about airplanes and stuff, but uh, it was a big deal because it was on, on the news, and mother was all emotionally involved in following the case, I guess. Uh, I think they watched um, Nancy, Nancy Grace, I think is what mother watched, Nancy Grace had the case, but anyway, um I wasn't into it. I wasn't into anything at the time, Janet. I wasn't doing shows, and uh, it was before, let's see, it's after I broke my back and neck. Mother was there, yeah, so it was in Kentucky. I remember where I was when I had the, the dream because we bought her home, and I remember being in my office. I had a master bath and a second bath and two extra rooms and one was office. But I have a vision during the day after she had come to me in a dream. So I don't know. That's why, Janet, you'll have to look it up. But when, Yeah, I'm uh, looking it up. Let me give you a little background. It, so she, it, it, um, it, she, it, Kaylee it was, was born, yeah, Kaylee was born um, uh, March 19, 1986. And so this was in two, wait, wait, August 9, 2005. So she was killed in 2008. And, oh, really? hmm Yes. Well, Mother, all right. Well, then Mother had already left and gone to Houston, was talking to me on the phone. So that's why I can see myself in my office during the daylight on the phone with Mother, because Mother moved, I think, November 2007 back. She went back to die in, my, in her old home, which was the family on the plantation in Richmond and plantation, uh, Pecan Plantation on the golf course, you know, mother wanted to go back to her big home and she'd been there with me and married and had a little bitty house like I'm in, you know, a little, little small two bedroom house, one bath. But, um, so while she was with me in Kentucky is when we had this emotional psychic connection to me and mother, but she, apparently it was still going on when she moved to back home to Texas because what what year did she? I guess the case started in two. What te- does it say? The death of the she, baby. She she was she died she in two thousand eight. Um, she was reported missing on July fifteenth, two thousand eight, and so 
she had been missing for 31 days. It was um, during the summer. Well, it was during the time that yeah, it had August. been reported. It had caught mother's attention. And mother was talking to me about it on the phone. But I had uh, told mother, she had told me about it. And for some reason, um, and mother and I didn't talk that much about anything, especially psychic stuff. But uh, mother had handled some calls, Janet, which you can appreciate from Stanton to Friedman, because we talked on the phone a lot. And I had uh, just in 2007 done that uh, swap, wife swap in 2007, or the first to 2008, right in that same time. So mother had me on the mind with doing television show for ABC Television, a wife swap, being a psychic. And then Stanton Friedman was calling me about the UFO stuff out of Canada and Majestic 12 and all that. So that's why, because Mother would normally never talk to me about this stuff because she never did in my whole life. Yeah, I just remember when she was a kid, uh-huh. she'd come out and talk about planes falling. So that's why this is really an enigma for me with Jeanette because uh, it, it links me to Mother and my granddaughter and something in the uh, ephemeris. But what happened was, mother and I were. T- I said, mother, that g- the little Kaylee, because I had emotional connection to her with my granddaughter, but it was somehow mother got to my emotions with it about being in Florida, uh, close to the same age. So see, my Kaylee now is uh, thirteen or fourteen, but she was born about the same time, two thousand eight. Seven or eight. Well, anyway, they were they were roughly two. So you get the emotional drama. So that connection was I had a granddaughter by the same name, Kaylee, living in Florida. <laughs> but I guess that's what made her come to me because uh, I don't know about the teddy bear or anything Jeanette did, but because because <clears throat> I had that dream, I discussed it with mother because she was into the case and mother wanted me to. Uh, because I'd, mother was never interested in, in me doing anything psychically. She'd say, you know, you know, I don't believe in UFOs, but she had that psychic ability, but she never understood me and didn't know about psychic stuff with me or any of my stuff in Hawaii or any of that. So it made me closer to my mom. So there's been something going on in emotions with my granddaughter and my mother and that story. So when, she, when Kaylee came thought, to you in a dream, when Kaylee she was dead. came to you in she, a dream. It wasn't five to seven she, days. I don't she, think. she was dead. She told what did she, she, uh, my mommy, what did she say? My mommy, my mommy uh, well, she didn't say kill me. How did she say it? She came in a dream, and I could envision and see her. And she uh, came to me in a dream and told me, talking to me like Michael Jackson would come to you because you see dead people. But she was... Uh, she right. came to him in a dream and showed me as clear as day is daylight. During the, it, uh, she showed me during the day, and it was in the woods. And I, uh, when I saw it later on, mother or somehow I don't know how uh, later on because I sent my while they were looking for her. Uh, mother told me, "Why don't you try to tell that?" lady nancy grace because mother knew that she had dreams but she said go ahead so um i didn't even know who nancy grace was believe it or not <laughs> but somehow a lady at the beaver dam cafe or somebody put it on the tv down there something i remember going to the beaver dam cafe and seeing the show and they said that's that nancy grace that you, you know <laughs> your mom was telling you about because i was going who's nancy grace so somehow that all got put together, I uh, emailed it to Nancy Grace. I never heard back from her, so I let it go. <clears throat> but the the vision, it was a dream and uh, where she came and told me my mom killed me. My mom, I'm, I'm, how did she say it? My mommy, she didn't say my mommy killed me. I can't hear you there, Teresa. Teresa, we just lost you. Okay. Jeanette, well, I'll get back to you while we try to figure out what's going on with Teresa. Sure. Okay, so, sure. so how, how did they so find we, her? 
So um, I was on the phone with the PI um, who really wasn't a PI. He went under the licensing of a lawyer, and he went out in the field after I called him. And I said, go to this location. You know, I gave very specific directions. And I said, I see a Suburban there, and I see a little white dog there, and I see a big black Suburban, just Suburban, Suburban, Suburban. And I said, I see a bunch of trees, and she's right in there in the trees. But when you get there, you're you're going to see a house that is abandoned, and you're going to see grass really high because it, it was an abandoned house, foreclosed on. And first, I want you to take a rod, stick it in the ground, make sure she's not right next to the house. And I want you to look for um, some wide pavers the size of your hand. So I said, spread your hand out, and it looks like three um, pavers are together. And I said, when you when you see that, keep going, and you'll you you might be able to smell the remains, but keep going, keep going, keep going, and walk into the woods, and then you'll see parts of her because. She's not sitting on the curb. She's in the woods, and the animals have torn her apart. Um, so she's been deceased for a while. And so, yeah, that well, it was June 2008. And um, I guess he went in the woods, and the tragedy was that when he was in the woods, Florida has some dangerous snakes. And he said snakes were going across his boots and going around his leg. And, you, you, you know, that that's mm. uncomfortable. So um, I said, get in there, find her. She's right there. And I actually <laughs> smelled her, which is a thing called synesthesia. And um, so the psychics who have, that have synesthesia, like my friend Angela Ford or Maureen Seberg or Heidi Hollis, a lot of us that have that talent can see colors and numbers and sense or smell a victim or smell something odd. So I kept I didn't yell at him. I, I kept saying to the PI, get in there. She's right there. And I guess he just couldn't handle it emotionally. And he came back out of the woods and he goes, no, she's not there. She's not there. And I said, yes, she is. She's right there. You've got to get back in there. And he stopped oh. everything. And uh, he went back out to, um, he was with a friend who was a PI. And at, the, at one time I was a, a PI and I had lectured for the Association of uh Florida private investigators, um, and and he said, oh, I'm here with so and so, which I believe I'd met him before, and he's another PI, and he had a decent reputation, and I guess, hold on, <coughs> sorry, um, they they left, but apparently they were in a black suburban, and it turns out the street they were on was called Suburban Street. Um, oh no. Not- yeah, not too, I said they weren't too far from a, an elementary school, and there was an elementary school down the street. And there is some confusion. People said I said a fence and this and that. And I said I never mentioned a fence. I mentioned suburban. I mentioned the three pavers. Um, nobody else gave me the information. I did it all by myself. And yes, the child came to me and told me where she was. But I also picked it up with intuitive uh, abilities, and it just is what it is. Um, and I and I, I think if people want to read more about some of the psychics who have this weird ability, synesthesia, you can pull up uh, Maureen Seberg, um, Maureen Seberg, S-E-A, I believe it's B-U-R-G, and she writes for a lot of people, and she writes about synesthesia. And so I have these weird talents to pick out a street name, like Angela Ford, who works for Stargate. Some of us have a lot of similarities. And then what happens? Can y'all hear me now? Yeah, we, we can hear you now. Yeah. Yes, we, you're back. Um, I don't know I, how long I was y'all asked, I've been uh, talking all this time. I don't know what we did y'all hear. hear you. No. What happened? No, nope, we couldn't hear you. I don't know. Well, you stopped well, I'm transmitting. I'm sitting talking at my phone. Well, what, did you hear anything that I said? Or, oh, we, t- I, we heard a lot. It was about, we were talking about what did Kaylee say to you, and you said it, it wasn't. She didn't say she was killed. What did Kaylee say to you, Jeanette? She said she talked to you. Talked what did you. Kaylee say? Um, she showed me visions. Did you hear about the visions she showed me? No, we didn't. Go ahead. No. Well, let me get, let me get what Jeanette said. Let, okay. let me get what Jeanette was told, and then we'll go back to you, Teresa. So what did Kaylee yeah. say to so, you? Yeah, so typically I don't extend myself into homicide unless I really want to. 
And I did not, she did not tell me who killed her. She just said, I'm deceased and I'm over here and I'm wrapped in a uh, laundry bag. Um, And I got the impression there was, there were two laundry bags that she was wrapped in and she was taken out of the house in a, in a laundry bag, like, like a, a bunch of laundry and then buried over uh-huh. with a banded hat. And then she just mentioned she was deceased. So um, because I kept seeing the suburban, which was suburban street, um, the PI just did not finish the follow through. So I decided to call Fox news and say, this needs to be over with. I said, this is ridiculous. Um <clears throat> She's over there, and I told the lady where she was, and I said, and I didn't know the lady was really uh, anti-psychic or or just basically rude and insulting with my work. Um, she went out mm-hmm. and tracked a bunch of people that said nasty things about me, which was not true. And um, and then it turns out that what I said became true. I, and um, so the child did not tell me who killed her. She just gave the location. So so that's where I am. And then Teresa got more information. But I did have a dream, and I did have um, visions at the same time, uh, the combination. And um, let's hear where Teresa dealt with. Well, I, Teresa, go ahead. Well, I remember, I don't know if y'all, I was trying to tell you that mother was, you know, emotionally had this connection about Kaylee being in Florida and being a granddaughter in the same age. So y'all heard that part, right? Yes, we got yes. that part. All right. And then uh, she she talked to me, but she talked to me in a lucid dream where she came like a ghost, but she showed me a vision of her in the back of the car, but she was covered like with a blanket. But um, she let me know mommy – she she told me, Mommy, she didn't say kill me, though. She said it, it, she, get, it, she gave me the impression in my head that it was an accident, that her mother would, like, drug her or something, I guess, to go into the party place. But uh, she pretty much gave me the impression that her mother drugged her and left her in the back of the car. You know how some kids get killed in the back of the cars? But uh, I don't know mm-hmm. if she... The vision the little girl showed me was in the back seat of the car with a blanket covered up, but that I think her mother moved her to the back of the car and left her there a few days because uh, I was getting the connection. But when she came back a second time, but it was really odd because it was a day. I'm talking to my mother on the phone about it, and I'm in my office in my home. And she showed me across the highway. She showed me a highway and a big long ditch. It was a big ditch and uh, not a ditch. It's like a. It was sort of a ditch. It was you walk off of the road and she showed me. I mean, I could see within a like a a, a vision a square. I don't know if it's, you said block or circle, but. I could see where it was, and it was a day. It was during the day when she showed me. It was a cloudy, uh, sun, a cloudy, sort of a rainy, overcast, gray day. And uh, she showed me where she was buried, and it was uh, there was trees and bushes, and I could see it. And I, I knew if I, I went down there, I could find it. But all I, you know, I told mother, and she said to get in touch with Nancy Grace, and because I guess that's who was doing the the case at the time. Mother watched it on TV, but uh, I emailed Nancy Grace about it, and this that told her that I had a dream, and you know that whatever she said to me at the time, uh, my mother. She didn't say kill me, I don't think. she. My mom killed me. What did she say? I can't remember now. But she did tell me and showed me where she was. But she showed me the vision of uh, you know her being in the back of the seat. And uh, I think her mother gave her drugs. On my, on, in my vision from the little girl or in my lucid dream that she, the mother, 
did it on the accident is the way the little girl made me think. So I think her as a person that's been on the other side. You know how an angel or her guide will I, – I tell people in this reality that their guide talks to my guide because I don't know how to explain it to them. But people on the other side, if you've been on the other side, it's like you have a gift. And so they call us psychic mediums because we can talk to ghosts or people that don't know they're dead on this planet. Janet does. But um, we tend to get people that are – Emotionally attached to us somehow. They can find us. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that part intrigues me about Jane. Now I'm talking to someone else. And it was the word Casey. <laughs> the little girl somehow, I said, brought me to Jenny or Jenny to me. So I don't know what that's about. So did you, I didn't hear your part somehow, I guess. I was <laughs> Talking, I thought y'all were listening to me. So uh, this is going to be a crazy show. I have to go back and listen. I always go back and listen to our shows. But okay, well let's go on to the next thing. So, so how did they finally find her? Was it? I, um, I got confused. Well, so we're going back and forth. Okay, so so this is Jeanette speaking. So basically, when I called the news news reporter, they went down there and they t took police down there and they started finding body parts. And when I say body parts, I'm talking about bones. Um, I got the impression. I mean, you know, they might have taken dogs down there and that kind of thing, but Dominic Casey did not disclose all the details. He was letting the media run with it, and he wanted it to continue. In my mind. Um, so uh, it's one of those well, things where, happens. well, let me, let me read what it. was said here. Let me read what was said here on December 11th, 2008, they found two year old Kaylee's skeletal remains with the, They were found with a blanket inside a laundry bag in a wooded area near the Anthony family's house that the investigative reporters and child testimony, testimony, testimony said there was duct tape found near the front of the skull and on the mouth of the skull. And the, the yeah, medical examiner that, mentioned duct tape. Is, okay. I think that's fabric. <laughs> that's fabric. <laughs> yeah, I just, I don't anyway, know that that's true. So that's not. what's in Wikipedia. <laughs> we, we don't know. We don't know all the details. You know, a lot of people say things and it's misinformation. And I think it definitely clouded the judgment on certain details about the, the facts on the case, which was destructive. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, I had... So they ever convict, not, anybody. They convict they, anybody? No. They, did anybody no. go to jail for this? Okay, so... Okay. Death by undetermined means is what it says in Wikipedia. Right. Here's what so happened. So it's in Wikipedia. It's, Whoa. Yeah. yeah. And so there's some weird... The Florida law but, is, but, um, is that what? What, Janet? Yeah. What? Janet? Go ahead, Janet. Go okay. Ahead, Janet. So one thing is, the Florida law was that she was. You had to prove that she did it, and because they couldn't prove that she did it, she got off, got free. Now, if it was an accident, so be it. But all she had to do was come out and say, "Hey, it was an accident," or "This happened," or "That happened." But she wasn't going to say a word. She had representation, legal representation, that told her to shut her mouth because everything was supposition. And so she got off. I mean, I'm okay with it because basically she was in jail for a little bit. Um, and it might have been two years off and on. And um, people were sending her money to be supportive of her. I mean, she was eating lobster here and there because if you give the jailhouse money, you get to eat better, um, but I'm I'm not going to say to you. I don't think she killed her daughter. I think it was either a contributing factor. I don't think it. I, I do want to say the word negligence was certainly a, a, an altering effect, but you know we can't you, you can't change the past. But they could not prove she did it. So 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 that was the outcome. You know you're stuck. All right. Well, I've always had the impression that the little girl was telling me the truth, that her mother 
gave her some oh, drug her and go to party or, or dance or stay at her boyfriend's or something. I think she loved the little girl, but she was negligent. So I never yeah. heard she yeah. did drugs or anything, and I didn't hear what happened or what happened to the case or the people. I just know the little girl's side because as a psychic, which I wasn't trying to be, but something emotionally touched me about mother telling me I had a little, you know, in it sad about the little girl in Florida, Kaylee. I said, what are you talking about? So mother's the one who told me about it. And I wasn't trying to be a notoriety seeker or any of that kind of stuff. But for some reason, you know, it touched mother. And uh, when I had the dream and the revisitation, I had two. I do remember that. So whatever happened at that time, I wrote down most of it or some of it. I'm, I'm pretty sure it was a long email. I sent it to Nancy Grace. But the thing was, nothing came up what I saw. But <clears throat> the thing was, I had to tell somebody, according to Mother, because what if I was telling the truth? But I guess it doesn't matter now. But, you know, that you're visited. And, and I wasn't a practicing. I didn't have a shingle out then. Of course, people knew to find me and, and uh, would come to my house and have readings uh, at the time, you know, from let, uh, off let me and ask on. Jeanette, uh, let me ask Jeanette one more question on, on Kaylee. Uh, there's a picture here that shows Kaylee with all her stuffed animals, and she's got mm-hmm. two teddy bears. Um, all right. Well, but do you still have the teddy bear? No, I had to send that back. So I was asked to send okay. it back to Luke Phillips, and from Luke Phillips, it went back to Dominic Casey. Do you now know what color Dominic the Casey? teddy bear was? The dad? Uh, it was. Okay, are you? Talk, I can't hear. Now let me just add, let me finish the teddy bear conversation. Uh, do you know what color the teddy bear was? Because there's two teddy bears. It was a light brown. Yeah, there's a light brown one, and it looks like a yellow. Um, suit or costume. It's a light brown head and a yellow. I guess it's wearing something yellow. Very interesting. Okay, so yeah, that, they actually have the teddy bear here, and I put it on the website if people want to go look at this case. I I put the Wikipedia with some pictures of her. An absolutely adorable little girl. I remember now seeing the picture. I remember she had uh, big brown eyes, and she was very angelic looking. Very cute little girl. Yeah. Very yeah. Okay, let's go on to something else now. Um, where, where do you want to go next? Because you have you've had dozens and dozens the of cases. Wanted... The reason I left off the last show with Jeanette with this was because one two. Three, I can't hear her. Now we can't Can hear you hear again. Her? I'm not sure what's going on. What? Do you have headphones, TJ, that you can put on? No. That might stop all this dropout. you got to get yourself – go order them on Amazon. Get a nice set of headphones for your phone. They have all kinds of no, headphones. It's because and, of it'll probably phone. stop all those myths. Janet? Okay. Uh, yeah, we lost uh, Teresa. Okay. Yeah. Uh, she'll call back in. <laughs> So go ahead. Let's right. continue with your story. <clears throat> so there's not much else to say. After the case was solved, um, the police called me and asked me why I didn't call them. And I said, simply, people don't listen. And simply, I'll be the 2,304th psychic that called in to tell you where her remains were. And it was really interesting. Detective Allen said to me, well, we might have listened to you because you have such a big background. Um, and your father. And I said, yeah, but they always say that and they don't do anything. I mean, I've found them many a person. I have cases, they still sit in my files. They've never looked where I told them where the bodies were. I even went to Virginia Beach area, well, actually Williamsburg, York County, I guess, and told them there were some bodies over in a certain area. The FBI was there. They never looked. They stood there and said, what are you doing here and why are you looking here? And I said, you can't smell those dead bodies? <laughs> they go, nope. And I said, okay, and wow. I, I gave up. I, I, I walked away. I was wow. like, why should I keep helping when they're, they're not going to take the next step? Um, and and then, they, then you have cases where, um, and I'll just give you a prime example. I got a case, a call last year, and a psychic uh, 
I guess she was from Arizona, who had a decent reputation, was flown to New England. They paid her like $30,000 to locate, I believe it was, I'll, I'll recall her name in a minute. But anyway, it was a case I'd always wanted to do because I had always thought, you know what, I bet she's right there. Um, <clears throat> anyway, um, <clears throat> the media paid her, the psychic out of Arizona $30,000 to fly to New England pinpoint where the remains were and she never did it she never found them she she did go to new she did go to new england from arizona and she did not find the remains and i'm not saying she you could be successful one minute the next minute you fail you don't know why but it is what it is or Mm -hmm. you can't pick up anything at all but what happened is like within a week they call me and say we heard about you we'd like you to work on our case we have no money um, we'd like you to come up here, but you'll have to pay your own way. You'll have to pay for it. I mean, I, I thought to myself, what? You want me to pay about $10,000 to stay in New England. So I have to fly up there, pay for it myself, um, pay for my own food, and, and find this young woman. Um, and are you going to look? No, you're not going to look. Because I already told you one time where, where she is. I mean, it, it, it's ridiculous. It's so, you know, I just had a call, six calls this year. Can you work on the case for free? Um, can you come here? I mean, somebody has called me this year. Hey, can you work on our buried treasure case this year? And, um, you know, it's going to be for certain celebrities, but we can't afford to pay you, but we're being paid by them. And, um, we need you to come on up here, find the treasure, and then we'll pay you. And, you know, <laughs> woulda, coulda, shoulda, you know, no. Right, um, right. Getting, it's just an ongoing saga of, I basically saying I don't respect you, but I need you to fulfill the solution, and it's it just it's it's again it's a saga. Um, anyway, so um, uh-huh. on on several cases I did do, people didn't know that I was the psychic on the case because I didn't think it was a big deal. And then I get a phone call um, a couple years ago from someone, and they said, "Oh, I'd like to interview you for uh, an article," and I said, "Sure." Well, the next thing you know, she sets me up with an agent, and she sets me up with the right people, and I get offered a book deal, and I so I have to turn in the proposal, and if everything goes well, I get a book deal. But during this process, and it's not about the Casey Anthony, it's not about true crime or homicide, it's about other things, and um, it's well worth my time because it's something I enjoy, but on true crime, you, you have a 50-50 shot on solving a case. You can be totally correct on the information, just like Teresa, um, and then all mm-hmm. of a sudden they just they don't look, they don't look, or they don't right. they don't they they just don't put out the effort. Um, it could be they don't want the psychic to solve the case. I mean, you don't see a lot of material um, out there about oh, Jeanette Jeanette solved the case. You know, um, Nancy Grace was kind enough to say yes, Jeanette did it. She pinpointed the location. And I did appreciate that. Um, I've been interviewed on other case work by NBC, and that has gone very well. Um, I've had other people call me for case work, but it's still that 50% of the road that's not finished because the detectives don't take the next step. And it's sad because, for example, I've got some case work in Tennessee, and nobody's gone to it. They, they don't call me back. They don't take care of it. Um, I cannot do it from here. I'm not paying my way to get there. I'm not going to pay for my uh, food. It's 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 ridiculous. Right. Um, you know, and you know what? The, right now, COVID's going on, so everything could be done remotely with the right people. Right. That's so, what, not getting this book deal that you're getting um, is it going to be your cases, or is it just the whole field in general? Is it going to be a series? There's a there's a series on CBS about yeah, no, psychic that goes around yeah. and I, I've been told not to disclose what it's about, but I'm hoping it'll be a trilogy okay. and, um, about some of my casework, but not about my true crime and not about my homicide. So um, I'm very excited about it, but I have to finish the proposal and I have to finish you know all the data they want. They request certain information. But the fact that somebody was nice enough to come forward and hook me up to the right people was just fantastic. Um, I feel very fortunate in that sense. Um, an actual breakthrough for me because so many people just kept 
being takers and I'm done with the takers. You know, if you want me for work, you know, pay for a reading, <laughs> pay for my time, uh, pay for the expenses. And um, I mean, again, you know, I get as many as five calls a week. Hey, do you want to, you want to do this and this and this? And they don't want to pay. I mean, I have people calling me. It's hilarious. Oh, could you, um, I'm going to send you my name and my photo and, and I'm going to send you information to help you help me. And I said, okay, and how am I going to help you if you don't pay me? <laughs> well, you're going to help me to help you to, I, I'll get a job and then I'll pay you. It, it's hilarious. It's, it's, it, it's, it's like making a cake that has nothing to put, you, you, the milk's not there. The egg's not there. Right. You just have the, the, the flour, the mix, it doesn't work. So it's it's been a long time coming where I'm finally going to do the book. I mean, I've been talking about it for years, but now that somebody says this is the, the material we want um, because this is what's going to sell, it's certainly going to pay me back for all the times when I pay for everybody else's uh, casework. So well, I'm happy I'm, I'm for you. I'm excited for you. So when do you think this might happen? Is it going to be in 2021? Is it going to be early or <laughs> mid or late in the year, I don't know. You know, I'm I'm pretty much in a position in my life where I'm trying to move out of Richmond, and as soon as my house sells, I'll move up toward D.C. and then I can dive in. But the move has taken precedence over the proposal, and um, rightfully so because this is my daily life. And as soon as that's done, um, once the move has taken place, I can dive into the computer and get it done really quickly. So. I'm sort of on the pending list of hurry up and wait to to move and hurry up and wait to get things done. Um, but I, I'm excited about things and um, uh, what what 2021 is going to bring me. And what I, I think this is going to be, uh, 2021 is going to be a wild ride. I, I mean, I really do. It's going to be like water skiing and you, you jump up and down <laughs> on the water. And it's it's going to be really hectic. Is that for you individually or for the planet? Is this a personal or a global thing that you're getting? Uh, the whole think, planet? I'm saying, I'm saying global. I mean, I think that uh-huh. water is going to be a problem. I think that flooding is going to be a problem. I think people are going to be over emotional. I think more deaths are coming. I think the tragedy with um, COVID is not over with or they're giving the impression, the government gives the impression, or the representatives of the government give the impression, oh, yeah, it's going to be fine. We've got this this wonderful vaccine coming. I, I don't agree. I, I just don't agree. I mean, What do you think is going to happen with the vaccine? Do you think this the, fifth, the Pfizer one is the first one they did? Yesterday they had several 90-year-olds, 80, 90-year-olds, in the UK uh, for the first to show up and volunteer. Do you think, now it's a two-shot deal, do you think that, that they're going right. to have any side effects or are they going to, is it going to work? What, what's your thoughts? I don't think it's going to work. I think we got three more years of COVID. I don't, I don't think we're there yet. I, I just think that it's... And that's what I'm getting. I'm getting that it's, 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 it's a long haul and this is like a population calling for the planet. You know, somebody's worried about over, overpopulation, but I think in the end this is going to, you know, well, we we already have, what was the stat? More people have died than in World War II or something. I don't know. It's getting there. It's it's going to get there. Uh, I have to look at the stats. Yeah. And I, don't quote me. <laughs> well, I saw something weird going on in India. They're having some terrible times where a large amount of people are falling ill and dying. Um, and it's not COVID, but my bet is that because they don't have an infrastructure to protect the, the humans from all their personal waste or chemical waste or um, it, they, they don't – when there's a town, for example, that I saw in a documentary that their waste – and the chemical waste was all combining into one particular lake and all the bacteria yeah. was airborne. And I thought, Oh my God, um, they don't have our environmental uh, rules and regulations or boundaries. 
they just throw it in there. So if they had a bunch of people die, they just chalk it off to, oh, my gosh, you know. Um, but they are brilliant people. They, and they, they really are brilliant people. Yeah. Like they really solve this. So well, maybe we've got to figure it out because it's kind of like those zombie apocalypse movies that, and series that you've seen that were, you know, it's not, it's, it's very serious. And I, I really, I kind of get angry when people don't take this seriously. It's like, no, we've had, we've had pandemics. We've had diseases since, you know, the humanity was invented, so to speak. And so we need right. to pay attention and, and not, um, it's like they invalidate people and, and they've lost their family members, you know, they've lost their friends. And so um, I, I guess people don't believe it until it's their immediate family. But by this point, they said everybody knows, everybody, by this time in six months, everybody's going to know somebody personally that has perished. Now we're starting to know people, you know, we know the actors, we know that this and that. Right, but it's going to be on a more personal level. I don't, uh, you know, this is not how I envisioned me ending my old age in this uh, zombie apocalypse, but here we are, so it's very sad. But we're going to do some predictions, but I guess TJ's not going to make it back. So I think we, we could wrap it up, and then we can always plan another. I think next time we're going to have to use um, her Skype. We were on a show on her Skype yesterday. And it did not, she did not uh, fall off like this. So um, her phones did not work. I don't know what's going on with her phones, but they did not work. We're having fun. We haven't uh, dropped our commit. Um, so something there, she's got 5G and I don't. <laughs> so there you go. <laughs> uh, anyway, um, any last words to our, pardon? Go to ahead. Your, to your listeners, to your listeners, no, just. Well, yes, I guess I would. I would say if you wanted to, you want to get a real reading, um, the psychics out there, check them out. See if they're good. Don't you know? Don't um, don't just select the first one. Check check them out and uh, see if they have a good do reputation. You private uh, clients? Do you I do, see I do clients that like to do readings? I do do I, I do offer uh, readings. I do, but I'm okay. Now, and so your website. Want, I, Website is Go ahead. Reach Jeanette, R E A C H, Reach Jeanette, G I N E T T E, uh, dot com. So R E A C H, Jeanette, G I N E T T E, dot com. And they can also call me at home, you know, which is a, this number is my, my public and private, because uh, I have a pretty quiet life. Um, 571 is the area code. Uh, 358 1444 571 358 1444 and um, yeah you're you're interested in the consultation give me a call I'm not too excited I recommend but... Jeanette <laughs> yeah I recommend you I, I don't I'm psychic but I don't do that type of thing I do psychotherapy and you know counseling and coaching but uh, I've never been comfortable to try to do anything with for a client because I'm not I'm not that accurate. I do have ghosts come to me when they die. That's about it. And, and I've learned to cope with that. But anyway, you you are uh, you have a finely tuned skill and you learn from your father. But go ahead. What was your final, what was your question? What was your question? Yeah, I I I think ghosts come to you cuz they probably like you. So enjoy while you can and just and coping is a good word because it it can be disturbing, I'm sure. So. Oh, I, I I am so honored with that they come to me, and yet at the point I had some that were annoying and they wouldn't let me sleep. So I asked my husband, who is a therapist who's worked with the discarnated people, and he taught me how to put up a boundary. And just like like humans, like with some humans, they don't pay either, right? And it's like, wait, 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 you're not leaving me any time to sleep. So, and I have to sleep because I have a uh, a waking life as well as they, they they often come at night and then sometimes I would wake up and I'm hoping it was a dream and there they are sitting on the foot of the bed and I go oh I'm not dreaming it's real but they can you know if you if you have someone's died and you want to reach them you can 
reach out to them in your thoughts before you fall asleep. And if you get uh, okay with them coming to talk to you, they they can. You know, people are always getting contact with their deceased. A lot of people are. Yeah, go ahead. A lot of people are unsure how to take the approach to talk to their loved ones. Um, and there is a way, but other times I think people do have the fear factor going on. And because of the fear factor, they just don't want to move forward. They'd rather use a psychic or someone like you. So, well, well, I haven't hung up my shingles, so call Jeanette <laughs> and schedule with her. <laughs> because I'm, I'm, I'm just, I'm not doing it for people, but you are doing it, and I think TJ can do it. I don't think I could, you know, bring in Uncle Joe or whatever right, like that. I don't think I could do that. But I, I really admire that you can, and Teresa can, and I'm just hit or miss psychic. <laughs> Well, it, it's, once again, it's been a wonderful uh, opportunity and good time talking to you. I appreciate you. And I'm going to call this a day, and then we'll try to get uh, you back another time with a maybe a, a psychic panel, if you know anybody else that you want to, and we could have like four of us talking about this phenomenon if you want. But let's just call it a day for today. So uh, make sure you reach Jeanette. R e a c h t i n e t t e dot com. Well, thank you for having me, Janet. You have a nice night. All right. Thank you. Blessings yeah. to you. Aloha. Bye bye.